Um, you stole all my leading lines already, oh, so, <laughs> so it's okay, yes, it's, it's okay to, to laugh. Um, uh, if Mark is still here, there was a, so I was actually presenting at the Location Tech last night um, in New York City, which is a, another great event. This, is, this facility, though, is phenomenal. Um, and uh, I, I quickly am going to just digress because actually a lot of the topics of GitHub have, have been covered, will probably be covered again. Um, but uh, you know, so something I've just been passionate about lately has been about biking, collisions, accidents, and in particular light we have uh, a new um, share program that was introduced five months ago in New York. And um, you're apparently going to have one here soon. Um, so one of the things that I did was dig into that data and see if um, that has impacted safety or there was an increase in the number of collisions. There's, you know, 35,000 trips a day on those bikes right now in the most dense part of the city. And the data suggests that the, there has been no increase um, as a result of having a bike share program. So um, if there are concerns going on here, um, I'm going to keep tracking that data and seeing where it goes. But uh, <coughs> um, Rob's presentation that I just saw um, was just great in terms of I did a lot of the map algebra is very important, very useful um, in terms of doing that kind of analysis of what is valid and what is relevant. And uh, the last point was the data that we had to work with was nearly unworkable. <laughs> um, some just incredible work um, by people collaborating, people, the uh, Open Code Brigade up in New York that I was working with. And um, <coughs> we got it mapped. And it seemed like the city was trying to obfuscate it. The police didn't want to release it. But the reality of it was is that the data was designed and put together long before anyone had ever thought of mapping it. So just a, a couple of tidbits that I thought were kind of important. Um, I really want to focus on doing demonstrations instead of talking about things and kind of showing you what we're doing. But just to kind of back up a little bit, Right. Uh, the reality is, is Esri has not done probably as much or what, as much as we should have in terms of supporting and participating in the uh, open source uh, world. Um, thank you, Robert, for pointing out that, yes, there is a lot that we're doing. Um, <coughs> but there, there's a couple things that are changing recently that I think we're going to do a better job. Uh, I have no illusions that it's not going to be perfect and there won't be challenges. But uh, a couple of things that have happened is that we actually have people who are passionate about this, who are working in our staff and working with our developers to help create and maintain a repository and an environment where they can work and uh, provide um, their code when appropriate to an, in an open source environment. Right? So you know, a lot of us are developers. We like to share and show what we're working on. Um, that's kind of in us. And, and also, the reality is if you, if you got into GIS, you, you didn't get into to be rich, right? <laughs> Nobody's really made that much money, uh, except for one guy, I know. Um, <laughs> 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 but we, we actually care. We actually believe that this technology helps um, our world in, in, in a lot of ways. So the second thing is, yes, GitHub. So Mark, yes, uh, the future is here already. And I'll show you, we've got 140-some repos. So. Um, so I won't go into this in, in depth, but just a couple of personal observations about um, GitHub versus um, my past experience as a developer working with version control software or the repositories that we used to have where we would share code and you'd be just a zip file that you would unzip and uh, you know, hope that it was kind of interesting. Um, one, uh, GitHub is, um, it's, it's in the crowd, cloud, crowd, cloud, woo, and it's distributed. Um, I can have more than one repo. I can have my own personal one. I can have my uh, one for work. I can also have a private paid one that's internal just for Esri development. Um, you know, before you used to have like that central location, and there was a little bit more control. Um, you know, marketing people would sort of like say what you couldn't, couldn't do and things like that. It feels more open in that way. The other thing is, was talked about is collaboration. What you're working on when you put it out there, someone can take that information and work with it. And they can 
keep it and use it all they want, but then they could also, if they wanted to, give you a push request and say, hey, do you want to incorporate that back in? Very powerful. Um, the last thing is um, it's just more than just code and documents um, and switch out. So this is my kind of initial experience. Oh, here's the data, actually. Oh. But, yeah, I digress. It's formatted pretty well. Um, I work with a number of solutions engineers, and we were frustrated last year. We wanted to collaborate, share code that we were working on to, um, for this platform called ArcGIS Online that we work a lot with, and um, we didn't know how to do that. And somebody said, why don't you use GitHub? And we're like, really? But we were like, well, but we want to, like, show best practices and have, you know, documents and kind of talk about it in, in, in that environment. It's like, well, here we now have, this is our wiki page. So, yes, you can drill in to a specific project. And actually, this project I want to point out was this was a contributor outside of Esri, a former professor of mine, actually, in Minnesota, who did a project and contributed it. So, here we go. This is a great example of a collaboration. And you can kind of see kind of the layout. And my screen's just not going to cooperate in terms of visualizing this very well. But um, you know, this, this was my introduction um, to GitHub and, and the power of it. So since then, um, this is Esri's kind of front page in terms of what we're doing with GitHub. And this is a nice front end. Oh, it looks a lot better on that screen. And so depending upon your preference and what you're interested in, you can kind of see some of the projects that are out there. Um, you know, whether it's Flex, JavaScript, And here's what sort of the more the, the repo generally looks like. So here we got 146 repos and 141 members, right? Predominantly Esri engineers um, who have the ability to contribute to this now. So let's have a look at just one simple one. So it's tag based. 100 lines less. So one of the things we did was <laughs> we actually had a contest at our developer uh, conference and got a whole bunch of people to contribute interesting code and uh, useful projects. And uh, the winner of that project was this real-time collaborative mapping. And so here was a fun example of uh, just to show you that it really does collaborate, let's open up two different browsers. And an example would be, I'm over here on the right, and I'm talking to my colleague on the phone, and I'm going to, let's just back out a little bit. Here we got the same area. All right, let's refresh it. It's been sitting there a while. Oh, that's no fun. Back to our little village up here. OK. So we can kind of go back and forth and say, oh, what about this area? This looks pretty interesting. Um, so this isn't going back to, this is just purely graphics going back and forth um, between uh, two applications, and it's just referencing that, that same applicant, that same URL, so you have that same URL at both, both, both locations. So I thought that was pretty fun. How are we doing? I don't want to delay the break too much. So <coughs> the next couple of things that I thought were interesting, and the reality is, is in, in here, um, if you're not immersed in, in Esri technology, a lot of it is about um, 
the, the ability to um, transform, move data in and out of different platforms, and that's kind of the theme that, um, that, that's going to be prevalent in here when you look at it. So, doo -doo. it's much easier when you're sitting at your desk doing all this. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do a couple of just demonstrations. First, I want to talk about a couple of databases. One's MongoDB, the other one's Hadoop. Um, if you've heard of big data, I'm sure you all have, um, or have a lot of, uh, you know, processing needs, um, these have become popular databases. And um, two of the projects that are out there uh, basically demonstrate ways in which you can get the data in and out of these uh, types of databases. And they probably get angry if I call them databases. They're something other than that, but for practical purposes, for, for understanding, um, really, really good and powerful. So Apache Hadoop is another one. Um, you know, if you're dealing with billions and billions of records, this is something you might want to uh, look into. Um, I tried to become a Apache Hadoop um, user uh, over the weekend, and it proved to be pretty challenging. Um, MongoDB was much easier. Yes, so if, you know, it's kind of in this realm of, of people, so <laughs> if there's any data scientists out there, this is what it's all about. Um, and so we have a number of tools that allow you one, to get data into Hadoop, but also get data out. Um, and the reason that this is important is both of these databases, they're heavily used, but the spatial anal analysis that goes on in them is heavily underutilized, right? So that's why we think it's important. That's why we wrote the tools um, um, for these uh, two platforms. Uh, just the, this is going pretty deep, but yes, there, there's a, just a number of tools that are available there. If you're interested, um, <clears throat> you can have a look at them. There's also a number of use cases um, in terms of blogs that are out there that I'm happy to point you to. And here's some examples of the different types of spatial analysis that is being done with Hadoop. And uh, again, I think the word billion um, shows up a few times here. Um, this next one that I'll show real quickly uh, is Terraformer. I feel like I need to say it like that. <laughs> um, this is really powerful and cool, and um, it kind of shows some of the challenges with the um, GitHub because they, they broke all the links to the cool demos yesterday, but I can still show some stuff. So, um, But again, right? People are going to use different software, different platforms with their data. It's important to be able to go between those platforms, um, have the data transform into those different formats easily and quickly. So here we go. Uh, so yeah, sorry. So let's just look at, uh, just real quickly, MongoDB. So um, it's a plug-in tool that you have to basically compile. So th in this case, it's, it's a C um, Sharp tool. And I've already done this. I've already loaded the data in. And if you go into, have a look at what it looks like in MongoDB, it sort of looks like, uh, maybe if you look in a table view, like you would in another SQL database, but it really is a little bit different. And so here's what this record looks like, and this is by collision data. And here now is the shape field that's been added onto it, so now it has a, a spatial component. Um, you know, queries look like this. It's a little different. Uh, so if I do find here are all the streets that are our, our broad street. So now that I have it in this form, um, I can now add it into um, format that I'm interested in, and we can see this data up here. So there it is, and if I look at the source, it's coming right out of that Mongo database. <coughs> Similarly, 
Uh, my toolbox didn't go away. Um, yeah, I don't need to go into in, in depth. But the same thing applies for the tools that we have for uh, Hadoop, where you can basically import and export out of that, uh, that environment. Um, So here's a look at uh, Terraformer. Um, and here's a couple examples. So so this is well-known text. So we'll go and it'll just load up well-known text and drop it in the map. And uh, here's a better way of actually showing that. So those of you who are not familiar with what well-known text is, it looks like this. And it has the ability to transform this into what's a feature service so that it will display on the map very quickly and very nicely. And this is a foundation for a number of the tools that um, uh, that are built upon, in particular, one, uh, the, the leaflet uh, for Esri, um, in terms of mapping that, in terms of how the transformation, how that makes that possible. And uh, so you kind of get the idea there, going back and forth between formats. And now I kind of just want to show, just real quickly, this is my favorite project. <coughs> Node service adapter. So this brings a number of things together. And so um, there are a number of source databases. And I'm just going to use this one. There is uh, this great service by a guy in Spain who basically takes and has an API into all of the um, bike, um, bike share programs in the world. And what this project does is basically takes that and transforms that into a REST service. And uh, it does that using uh, Node.js, if anyone heard of that. And um, so, sorry. So here's what it looks like. So back in Spain, somewhere in a database, there's this API. It's transforming this, taking and dropping this in um, to a um, JSON format that fakes it so that it looks like it's a REST service. And when I go into, I don't know what capital bikes are, share, NYC. So this is City Bike for New York. And notice that, really, I hit this JSON button. It's just JSON underneath the hood. That's all it is. And if I want to look at the current status and query it, here's the JSON. And you're like, well, I don't like JSON. I really want GeoJSON. There. There we have GeoJSON. And just to prove it. I've already tested it. And there it is. So um, I don't know about you, but this blew me away when I understood this. Like, it's REST isn't some like gobbledygook binary underneath the hood. It's, it's just JSON, and it's how you want to format it and view it. And what you're going to ingest it into is, is really what's important. Um, and so I know my time's running out, so I'm just going to uh, kind of leave it there. Um, just one last tidbit is we have a lot of what we call story maps that are also in this 
GitHub site. And these are map templates. And the idea is a lot of people in a lot of organizations, especially the ones that I work with, don't have the ability to have developers. So if they cannot configure it, um, they're not going to be able to make it. And um, there are a number of really interesting ones out there that not only just show you the map, but also tell a story and engage the user. And uh, this is something that I did where um, I was able to go out and spend uh, like three hours taking photos of all the most dangerous collisions in, in New York for bikers and um, loaded that up into a service. And this template just ingested that. And I had this fairly nice looking map, very easy. So um, I know I kind of rushed through it a little bit, kind of took some diversions, but hopefully I kind of gave you a, a good idea of some of the things that we're working on. And uh, thank you for your time.